This video is about the quick beige fox story, which counts the 40 sounds, phonemes, of USA English. That has three phonemes. The a sound, the vowels are always very the most interesting. And that has, the letter A is used for the a sound, which is the most consistent use for the letter A. Quick, beige. Now the long A is made by moving the silent E next to the long vowel, the vowel it makes long. So the letter A becomes uh, the A. This becomes the A sound with the E next to it. And Z is the rarest sound of English. And it's represented by a ZH. Fox. The ah sound is represented by two A's in true spell, and X by KS. Uh, X is actually not needed and is used for sounds of other languages. Jumped in the. This th and that th are what's called the voice ths. You can you can hear the. You can hear a little um, sound behind it. E, we have the silent E brought up to the letter E. The name of the letter is E, and the, the, the phoneme sound is E. Air, this is an R modified vowel. <clears throat> and it has a little bit of a different vowel sound, so we combine it with air and call it one vowel. Over. O has a, the silent E brought over to the letter O, so that's what O looks like, like in the word toe. Ver, now this is another A uh, modified uh, vowel sound. It's not the uh, short sound, eh, it's er. Each, the CH is a very typical spelling and traditional spelling of the CH sound. Thin, you can hear th is voiceless, whereas th it has a voice to it. So we add an extra H in true spell to indicate that voicelessness. Dog, the aw sound is a fairly typical spelling. A-U is a fairly typical spelling of that, uh, in like an auger in English. And that's the G is used only for the hard G. Look, you can see that's the same spelled as in traditional spelling of English. The double O stands for the U uh sound. And that's a, a very underappreciated sound uh, in English. But we use the double O. So put and look would be have the same sound. Out. The O-U is typical spelling for the O sound in English. Here we have the capital I standing for I, and we bring the silent E over. So that's how you spell the I sound. Shout, S-H, is very typical spelling of the sh sound. For, here you have an, uh, an, a vowel influenced by the letter R. It's not quite a long O or a short O. So we call that one phony. He's the H sound is a letter H typical for the he sound. And the Z, in this case, we have an apostrophe S for he's in traditional spelling, but we really don't need the apostrophe S. We just use the letter Z. It's not an S sound, it's a Z sound that's that H E apostrophe S would spell. Foiled, the O-I is a typical spelling for oi. U, the Y sound is typical. The the U sound is made by bringing over the letter, a silent E to the letter U. And that's the U sound, typical as in the word true, blue. But look, but look at look. This this is not the U sound. It's the U uh sound. And that's the ooh sound. 
again. Note the double G. That shows that stress is not on the usual default first syllable, but if you see a double consonant, it means the next vowel is stressed. So it's again, and that's the short E sound. And that's how you spell the short E with just the letter E. Creating. Long word. <clears throat> Several things going on here. The R is alone, so that's the 40th uh, uh, phoneme, and we're, we're from, we can understand Cree. But notice the E is followed by another vowel, two, vowel, two vowels in a row, which is fairly rare. There's usually a consonant in between. In this case, we put the quote sign in between, which is a new use for the quote sign. And what it means is it separates the two vowels, and it means that this vowel, the second vowel, is stressed. Just like after a double G, is a double consonant is stressed, well, after a double apostrophe is stressed. The quote sign is a double apostrophe. Creating the NG is, these are just N and G vowels. A lot of, a lot of places say that's a special a special sound, but those are just not vowels, but they're consonants, special, just consonants. And chaos, the, we have uh, two vowels in a row again, and we separate them with an apostrophe. And this case is a single apostrophe, not a double apostrophe as over there. So what it means is it's the usual form where you have the stress on K and just a spacer and then os, because you'd have all those vowel letters together, so that's just the separator uh, showing chaos. And all these dashes would be missing in regular true spell, so it would look it would look without the dash, as you can see. That would look the same. In would look the same. The air would look the same. A lot of words would would look the same. Look out, shout for. So true spell is meant to be close to English, and it is very uh, uh, English friendly. It's computer friendly. Anybody can type them out on the computer. It's it's analysis friendly because you can analyze things uh, using spreadsheets. It's spreadsheet friendly. It's also capital and capitalized friendly, and uh, and punctuation friendly. The only Little difference is the use of the quote and the apostrophe. And that is all you need to know, really, about true spell. Uh, possibly with the stress rule, again, the stress is after a double consonant, but what if you have an SH? Well, then you double the S in that case. Uh, and, and the CH, you double the C. And this one here, you would double the T. So you'd have double T, H, H as opposed to it over here, you double the T as well, but you'd have a single H. So that would be a, the, 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 the voice TH, the th sound. And the Z, you double the Z in front of the H. Now you know all the rules of true spell phonetics. And you can spell any word in English with these phoneme spellings.